A public proclamation before proceedings commence. I, David George Beastow, being of sound body and mind, which is questionable, hereby swear by the Supreme Being that the evidence which shall follow shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, or at least the truth, as told to me by Mr. Rob Whitehead and Mr. Alan Staniford. <laughs> Q. Members of the public, members of the public gallery, Mr. Peter Brown, of no fixed abode, which will be the case after today's hearing, stands before this court today guilty of some of the most heinous crimes ever perpetrated in the name of humanity. Crimes which have been which have penetrated the moral core of our society, and crimes which, if left unpunished, will destroy the very fabric upon which our democracy is based. Peter Brown, would you go over there, please? <laughs> you are faced with a series of charges stretching over a period of some 30 years or more. Specifically, you are accused of being a womanizer and a philanderer. A drunkard and a degenerate. A con man and a coward. A liar and a storyteller. A mimic and a piss taker. A backstabber. A backstabber and a humiliator. A transvestite. A cross dresser and a fashion disaster. Do you want to hold up now? And most importantly, you have failed to uphold the values and virtues demanded of someone was at the honour of being born and bred in God's chosen republic. <laughs> you will be tried and found guilty <laughs> by a body of three good men and true. Wilson, <laughs> Keppel and Betty. <laughs> Operating on the, under the auspices of the most blessed order of the Labour Lords of Claycross, <laughs> acronym Bollocks. <laughs> Peter Brown, I'll plead you. You've got nothing on you. <laughs> For the record, will the clerk of the court please enter in the register the accused plea of not guilty? Absolutely. And will the clerk now bring in exhibit, exhibits one to one hundred? <laughs> <laughs> it is for you, Mr. Brown. <laughs> it is for you to present and elaborate upon the evidence given to you. And for legal clarity, the order's statute book does not contain a Fifth Amendment. <laughs> Under normal rules of law, you will be asked to take an oath on the Bible. But because we know you are such a lying despot, <laughs> the bench hereby warns you of your judicial responsibility by way of a rendition. You ready, lads? Ready. Take your... <laughs> 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 I can see that as well. <laughs> 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 
sadly can't be with us today, um, and, and remind him of, of, of that, that, that very accolade that all men long for, but very, very rarely achieve. It would have been an accolade had Peter been the only one to receive it. Hands up everybody else who received it! <laughs> and we're not going to disclose who that person is. <laughs> and me, quite simply, Brown slept with me last year and now he's married. <laughs> And what does it say, Mr. Brown? The International Traffic and Revenue Report. Budget tons 20, actual tons 16. <laughs> that implies that there's some sort of cooking of the books or fiddling figures. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, as one eminent colleague put it, he was always a few. There's someone shocked here. He, he, he was always a few tons short of the right results. <laughs> <laughs> and again. <coughs> We will commemorate that in song. Okay, gentlemen. Sixteen tons, and what do you get? Another month older and deeper in debt. So all the more you call me, cause I can't go. I hold up the boy's shoulders, and I'm my woe. 